The latest version of Studio One is out with a gang of new features, and one of them was unexpected. That's right, version 6.5 has a Linux beta. And they really do stress the beta, noting that it's intended for advanced Linux users and plugin developers. And you're going to need Jack configured on your system before you even think about playing the home game. And on top of that, 6.5 requires both Wayland and a Vulkan compatible GPU. And as with all betas, a couple of things are missing, like support for Thunderbolt, third party plugin GUIs, and support for LV2 plugins. But none of that's going to stop us. So let's download the dev package, save it to our downloads directory, and have a go. Here we are in our downloads directory. We have our Debian file. We got to get that installed. How are we going to do that? We're going to use the terminal. Why? Because it said advanced Linux users. So let's be advanced about this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to open a terminal right here. Now, let's make sure we're running Wayland. Easy way to do that is just to type in echo xdg session type and it's going to spit out Wayland. If it doesn't, you need to go get Wayland installed. I just want to make a point of this because I tried to install it on X11 because I didn't RTFM. After that, we can install the Debian package with sudo apt install studio stq. No, stq. Get rid of the spaces in the dev file studio one person who packaged that. This isn't Windows. Let's hit yes. We need about 400 megs of uh, dependencies have to download along with this. No big deal. And we are good to go. So we can close the terminal. And Studio One should be located in multimedia if you're running GNOME or KDE. But it popped right up. Now let's go ahead and accept the EULA. Activate our product. Ah, uh, thank you. It's going to scan our plugins, right? I have 454 plugins. That's quite a bit. And that's just my VSTs. I'm going to go with a minimum installation on this. I've never used Studio One, by the way, so feel free to scream at your monitor for everything that I'm just basic stuff that I'm missing here. We have a nice little welcome screen. Artist profile. Okay. Setup. Okay, I like to see that. That's like right there, front and center, external devices, quick switch. Oh man, this is a bunch of stuff that I should have read that uh, I'll have to go back and look up later because I wasn't paying attention. That's the right way to do things. Let's go check this out. Because the first thing I see here is uh, it was very clear about Jack. It did mention Pipewire, but right out of the box, it got an option for Ulsa too. Huh. You might want to update that page there. Presonus. I'm going to be using Jack anyway. I have everything in the studio configured with the Jack. And you do have the option to um, start Jack if it's not running. Traditionally, I have that started with a script. Um. Maybe something a bit more logical with that. 128 samples, 48K. Processing. Dropout protection. Completely unfamiliar with this. Uh, external devices. We are going to be using an IO Station 24C because I did a review on one of those a few months back. Go check that out. So let's hit new. Record and mix. We need some files. And I have files ready. These are some dry multi-tracks from one of our podcasts. I'm going to drop that in. Change everything to 48K because that's what they're recorded in. And we'll click OK. Womp, womp. I can reliably get it to crash each and every time. For some reason, it doesn't like my WAV files that are over a gig. It's bizarre. So let's do a take two on this. Record and mix. 48K. We're good here. We're just going to click OK. Now we're going to add the files. Actually, let's just add one file this way. Plate safe. I'm going to maximize that. There we go. We're just going to take this and drop it in. Hey, zoom. Okay. Mix does. There we go. We have faders. Um, play. Window Maker now supports hot corners. I was really excited about this. So you can send your mouse to a corner of your display. We have audio. I feel like a mixing engineer. So this is the IO Station 24C. Uh, PreSonus is known for the integration with their hardware. Let's find out. Beta works. All of our automation works. Uh, touch, watch, read, write. Mute. Okay, record arm. Solo. This doesn't do anything. Let's try scroll. No. 
shift zoom. No, I'm still not 100% on what. I always assume this knob should work like a jog dial. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, not getting any love on that. It does work in pan mode. A command. Okay, and transport you, works. And we can kind of scrub with these little guys. And of course our fader works, but there's an issue. If I move the fader here, I don't get feedback, and that's motorized fader. That should be moving on the I.O. station when I adjust it there, because that can cause problems with your faders jumping around. Let's check QJack and see if we got anything funky going on. Well, it didn't automatically connect the event out. Maybe that'll give us feedback? No. Yeah, like they said, this is a beta. It plays audio. I consider that an absolute win. So we're already ahead of the game. What else should we do? Window Maker now supports hot corners. Mm. I'm really excited about this. Plugins. Yes. That's the one thing I want to check out. And I do have a, and I got a pretty decent collection of um, open source and commercial plugins on Linux. I know, yes, uh, there's tons of them, but we're probably going to focus on these PreSonus plugins because they have pictures and that makes them better. Let's try their channel strip. Drop in here. Ah, that works as it probably should have. Whoa, where'd you it go? Can send your mouse to a corner of your Double display click. and have it execute what? a command. And in you can okay. access it in the Window Prefs app or um, edit the ah. Window Prefs file. There we go. So you just Window click Maker. on it until it gives up. And for me, this is cool because I often use Window Maker when I'm I'm podcasting, and in fact, I'm on mm. right now, and it's, it's so I got a question. Nice, is like Studio nice One intended for like um, hot corners because I can launch just like home users easily that way. I tend to think about so instead of normally maybe I'm wrong. Script maybe I'm wrong, but the, 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 the second I see a one knob compressor, I'm like, yeah, maybe maybe it's more of an amateur dog. Um, this is something I've been waiting but I mean, this for would be a, a perfectly serviceable uh, channel strip, I guess. It's got a compressor, but an expander, which I guess only goes up. I would like to see a downward expander on that basic EQ parametric, probably. In the keyboard shortcut um, tab, including a auto gain. To capture That's a wild. Of the screen, capture a window, or capture okay. the entire screen. And you have three modes for yeah, the compressor, fast, medium, and slow. <laughs> We got a DS here. Been around for years and years, but we finally have it on Window Maker. Let's try that out. Take, um, I'm very happy about this because I take lots of screens. Again, that's, that's pretty basic. And there's uh, also lots of improvements. Just uh, controls over our frequency. We have a listen option. That's nice. Shape narrow and wide, range full and gentle. Primary. Jill being Jill, she's gonna be around 6K. Really nice. Because okay, so it does work. Uh, that's. That's that's an issue. It that's really all I'm checking right now. By the way, I'm not display heads looking like for results right now. I'm just looking for things moving around in the GUI. And yeah, I just I love and. What else should we try? Um, all I have is dialogue. I mix podcast, so let's just try some of my existing. How do we get rid of plugins? Right click, right click here, remove, right click. All right. Um, I know these aren't going to work. Uh, here's one the Windows users and Mac users might know about. It's also a Linux plugin, Rough Rider. And uh, as advertised, no GUI whatsoever. But no options either. It's just blank. I was hoping for, like on Reaper, if you don't have a GUI, it'll give you the UI button with some just really basic sliders. And we're, in, and we're seeing the same thing for the um, Analog Assault 551 channel strip. Who else should we try? Audio thing? Drop that in. More of the same. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. They clearly, PreSonus has pointed out, like, this is what you should expect right now. We're just trying this out. I don't even know what's going on here. So let's just remove that before it scares me further. Let's try some, let's try some ACM. I haven't registered these. I just copied them over from the studio DAW. This has a GUI. Next Come on, step, move. And I like open step. And okay. now we have GNU step. So for whatever moon reason, uh, this thing's working. 
And I enjoy installing you, dock apps ACM. in Window Maker for viewing hardware stats. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Sound, using sound okay. mixers or just having cool little clocks. Little Fairchild. And um, actually, that was the original inspiration for the modern desktop widget. Well, no, so we want to... So, okay, yeah, Linux Studio run, Project. Run these are mainstay. <laughs> to the desktop ecosystem. Ah, and all right. One of the reasons so this is what I was I expecting like is just kind of a default. I like right-clicking. On the screen to get my menu. <laughs> Just basic knob <laughs> controls. You know, something similar to what you get in Reaper. Um, that day maybe that try the wasted EQ. For letting us know. Yeah, just more of the same. Nothing crazy here. This is just a little basic three band parametric. So there we have it. PreSonus said this was a beta, and that's pretty much what it is. It's really limited, but they tell you that right at the start. But I am curious as to why PreSonus is using Jack instead of just targeting Pipewire directly. Because that tells me they know Pipewire isn't quite ready for primetime, but they seem to think Wayland is. That's optimistic. That said, it's not going to be replacing Reaper in my production studio anytime soon, but who knows what the future holds. Anyway, you can give it a download and play around with it for 30 days for free. There'll be a link in the description. And I sincerely look forward to the continued development of Studio One on Linux. And hopefully, maybe, pretty please, some official Linux drivers for PreSonus interfaces. That would be super neat. But that's going to do it for this one. If you have any thoughts, hints, allegations, or things better left unsaid, leave a message down in the comments. And we'll see you next time.